So today we're going to be overclocking Ryzen 3 and it's going to be a very basic tutorial today where we're just going into the BIOS and changing only a few settings around to extract a lot more performance out of our Ryzen 3 CPUs, especially the 1200 if you recently purchased it. Now if you do want to go more advanced and overclock to higher levels and you have a better cooling solution, then I will put my X370 and 8 core Ryzen overclocking tutorial in the description below. However, today we're going to be taking things real slow, kind of like that first date with your first Anyway, you're going to need two programs. I recommend Cinebench R15 and also Ida64. Now, I'll put the links in the description for both these programs, and I want you to install them, and then you are now ready, and we can move on and get started with this tutorial. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And now we're on the desktop. We've downloaded those two programs, Ida64 and also Cinebench R15. Now, before we do anything, I want you guys to open up Ida64. And now you don't have to buy a license key. You'll probably get a trial version, but that's okay. With the trial version, we can go to Tools and then click on System Stability Test. And you should be able to hit the Start button. And once you do that, I want you guys to leave this running for 10 minutes. And now the whole purpose for doing this is actually twofold. The first reason being we want to establish a baseline for temperatures. So after we start overclocking, if our temperatures are going too high, then we know that we're doing something wrong. Secondly, we also want to make sure that there's no problems with our computer before we start overclocking. Because after we lock in some settings, if we're having problems that were already there before we started overclocking, then that will just add a lot of headaches and frustration, which we don't need. So let this run for 10 minutes. You can also click on the CPU ID button, and that will bring up the speeds for your CPU. You can see here we've got 3.1 gigahertz or 3,094 megahertz here, which is the base speeds of a Ryzen 3 1200. You will also notice that the memory speeds are displayed here, and we've got DDR4 2133 megahertz, which we'll be overclocking in the second half of this tutorial. But let's run this for 10 minutes and we'll come back. And after we've hit the F2 or the delete key, or you can hit both of them at the same time, I actually prefer to spam both these keys until I'm into the BIOS, we then get to the menu here, and this is the ASRock BIOS. Now, different BIOSes will have different interfaces that look a little bit different. I know, for example, on Gigabyte's motherboard, you have to hit the F6 or F7 key to get into advanced mode, which is where I recommend. And then once you're in this BIOS, you can hit the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard and go over to overclock tweaker. And now you should see some settings here with the CPU frequency and voltage change. So basically in this tab, I want you guys to hit enter and then click manual. So we hit the down arrow, go to manual, and then it'll bring up the CPU frequency. And now we want to dial this in a 3000 800 that's what we want to press and then press enter and now we should have 3.8 gigahertz dialed in to our cpu now of course you can go higher but this is a level that i believe practically everyone should be able to obtain for instance i was able to get four gigahertz on this cpu on this particular cpu but i did have to ramp up the voltage quite considerably now we go down to this next tab, CPU voltage. So we hit the down arrow, we go down here and we type in one decimal 2.9, I believe. That's about where you'd top out at. I believe if you, if your computer doesn't boot at this voltage with this speed, then I'd imagine you are very unlucky and you may want to go here and change it to 3,700, at which point it should be guaranteed to work. However, 3,800, oh, not on the voltage, sorry. <laughs> that was a mistake. Uh, 3.8 gigahertz at 1.29 volt should be absolutely fine. However, keep in mind though, on your keyboard, you do have the plus and minus arrows, which you can also use if the numbers are not working themselves. So you can actually manually change up and down the voltage with the arrow, the plus or minus keys on your keyboard. So they're the first two settings we're gonna lock in. And usually in a different uh, BIOS and, and practically every BIOS that I know on the AMD uh, Ryzen architecture, you can go down and go to save user default. And this is saving a profile so we can work on this if we have any problems. So what we're gonna do is go to enter and type in 3800 megahertz overclock and this will be our overclocked profile we've then saved it 
And now after you've done this, you'll actually want to go up here to the top right hand corner to the exit tab with the left and right arrows and then click enter to save changes and exit and click yes. So now if all has gone well, then you should be on the desktop with a Ryzen 3 CPU that is now at 3.8 gigahertz. Keep in mind, if you want to apply this tutorial to a Ryzen 5 6 core or a Ryzen 7 8 core, then you may need to increase the voltage. And with that, you may need better cooling. So just keep in mind that this uh, tutorial today is specifically for a Ryzen 3 CPU. So once we've done that, we can open up IDA64 again and go to the same menu that we did before. So we want to test the temperatures, we want to make sure our computer is completely stable. And if it's not stable, if something's crashed in this test, or if something's crashed and you can't even boot to Windows, uh, that was just me shutting it down. If you shut it down without closing down the program, it will bring up that message, so don't freak out about that. So what we want to do is start, and we want to leave that again on for 10 minutes. However, while this test is running, I'll quickly talk about what you can do if your computer is crashing and it doesn't boot into Windows. And if this is the case, you can then take out your little CMOS battery, it's a little circular battery on the motherboard, and plug all the power off and leave this off for a good minute and then put that battery back in. And this will essentially reset the BIOS. There's also a clear CMOS uh, jumper that you can switch the jumper from the left to the right, and that should also clear the CMOS as well. Or if you're lucky enough to have a good enough motherboard, It'll have a little clear CMOS button on the back, which you just tap this and you now reset back to default settings. So now that we've overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz, we can see that the temperatures have gone up to around 56 degrees, which is still really good. We've still got a lot of headroom for overclocking even further if we wish to. And keep in mind, this is on the Wraith Stealth Cooler, which is the stock cooler that comes included with the Ryzen 3 1200. If you have a bigger and better cooler, then you should see even lower temperatures, though I don't really recommend it on this CPU since it doesn't use up much power to begin with. So 56 degrees, if we want to take this to 3.9, or 4 gigahertz, you guys can do so in your own spare time. However, once this overclock is done, we then click stop, and it's pretty much stable at this point. It may be unstable if you have a crash in games, for example, that wasn't there before the overclock, then you may have to go back into the BIOS and just down clock it to 3.7 gigahertz, or you may have to give the voltage a little bit more. So it's pretty much a direct correlation between speeds and voltages and temperatures when it comes to overclocking. So now you can see here, I've opened Cinebench up, and what we're gonna do is run this uh, benchmark just to make sure that our numbers, our 3.8 gigahertz, is actually concrete. And now beforehand, I believe we got around 470 Cinebench points with the Ryzen 12 out of the box at around 3.1 gigahertz. After we do this, we should be getting well into the 500s, I'd say close to 600, and that will give you an idea of how much performance we have gained with such an easy overclock. So we scored 564 Cinebench points, and this is also without any overclocks to the memory. As we pointed out before, there was 2133 megahertz memory speeds currently on this system. And now with Ryzen, you will want to overclock your memory. It's very important to get benefits in not just any program in general, but also gaming. And your frame rates are pretty much directly correlated to your memory speeds on Ryzen, just like they are correlated to your clock speeds. So with that said, let's move on now to part two of this overclocking tutorial. So now we want to go back into the BIOS and back to Overclock Tweaker, the same tab where we overclock the CPU. As we can see here, we've got 3.8 gigahertz and 1.29 voltage roughly on the core vault. And then what we want to do is load XMP profile and we can press profile one. And now what this will do is it will load up a profile that's automatically stored in your memory uh, to give these settings for the memory to boot up at a guaranteed speed. However, there is a big problem with Ryzen, and that is a lot of the times the XMP profiles don't properly work with the motherboards. And I'm lucky in this case that my crucial ballistics memory, it works at 3200 megahertz. However, we don't just do that. There is another very important setting if we're going for high memory speeds, with Ryzen, and that is this uh, setting here, the system on chip voltage. Now in different motherboards, it will behave in different ways, but what we wanna do here is press the plus key, and we wanna give it a good 100 millivolts. Sometimes you might wanna give it a little bit more, but really don't go past 150 millivolts just yet. I'd recommend giving it a solid 100 millivolts, which is what we see here, 105 millivolts, uh, and then we can leave that, and try and lock in our XMP profiles. And then we quickly go to save and exit and give that a try. 
So now if your computer managed to boot up in the XMP profiles, then you don't need to go any further with this overclocking tutorial. You now have a CPU running at 3.8 gigahertz, and you can also go back in and try and up to 3.9, 4 gigahertz, that's up to you. And you've also got your memory set, and you should be having a really good experience now on Ryzen. However, this next part is for someone who is having problems with their memory speeds. For instance, they've tried locking in this XMP profile. However, your computer is crashing and you've had to go back and clear the CMOS with the battery, take it out or do the other two methods that we mentioned before. And now you're back to square one. You don't know what to do with these memory timings. So what we can do is we can try and load up that profile again and it will give us the DRAM frequency. And what we want to do is we want to lower it to 2,666. Now, every stick of memory that I've had go through uh, Ryzen has been able to be overclocked to 2,666 megahertz. I haven't had one stick that hasn't gone this high. Uh, of course, I've had sticks that have gone to 2,933, and now this memory goes to 3,200 megahertz. So your mileage may vary, but as with these overclocking tutorials, I'm sort of locking in something that is guaranteed, and I believe 2666 should be guaranteed. So now after we've locked that in, so we've changed our memory speed, we've downclocked it, and what we want to do is we want to go to DRAM timing configuration. And now in this tab, we'll get a lot of different timings, which is kind of scary because I have had 2666 just from the get-go not work. So what we want to do is we want to actually change this to 16, this timing here, the cast latency, change this one to 17, and then go down and change this to 17 and this one also to 17, and this last one here to 40. I found I've never had a problem once I've locked in these timings on any stick of memory that I've put through this system. It is important to mention there is another setting as well called the command rate, and you can drop that to 2T if nothing else is working. However, some biases don't have this option as well, which further confuses things. But for what it's worth, we can try and leave that at 1T, which is best for Ryzen and performance. And now that we've done that, we can then go to the save changes and exit and then boot back into Windows. So we've now loaded back into our desktop and the first thing we can do is yet again, go back into IDA64, open that up and go to the CPU ID tab. So tools, CPU ID, and what we should see here is the memory speeds. They should be confirmed, 2661. So it's roughly the speeds that we locked in, very close. And we've also got the timings there as well that we locked in. So the last part in this phase is to quickly go to the stability test yet again. So tools, stability test. And then this time we can untick everything else but stress memory. So we can do this for roughly, again, 10 minutes and you should be fine. You should know that your computer is completely stable at these settings. And now that you've done testing your memory for a good 10 minutes, we can then open up Cinebench and then try and run another final Cinebench score. And as we can see here, we scored two points higher, so you should get a very slight increase in performance in Cinebench with your memory speeds being now higher. But the best benefit will come when you start gaming. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below what overclocks you achieved on your Ryzen 3 system or on your actual other system if you don't even have Ryzen 3 and you're watching this tutorial. I'm hoping you guys got some big gains just like I did on the system I used here today. Of course, Ryzen is a little bit problematic with some of the memory, so be sure to be careful with that if you're overclocking. And also if you had any troubles or anything that was confusing in today's video, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. And I'll I'll get back to you as soon as I can or if I don't answer the comments then you can head over to techcity.tv slash forum that's our website and there is a lot of guys just like me who will be able to help you easily if I don't get back to you in the comments section anyway guys hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon peace out for now bye